My name is Bob Gomez, and I'm here today to give you guys the ultimate demo of the new Gitler guitar. This thing is unbelievable. It's made of titanium. It uh, it's uh, started out. There's a long history on this guitar. It was originally designed in the '70s and totally reworked for for 2015. It has um, 31 frets, uh, LED lights, a MIDI controller. Um, and enough talk, let's hear some playing so you can hear what it sounds like. It sounds really cool in a lot of different styles. Straight ahead. Clean sound, sound really cool with it. that an all metal guitar would sound like a metal guitar and it really kind of doesn't. It sounds like something I've never played before. I've been playing a long time. I've played a lot of different guitars and this thing is one of the most unique guitars I've ever played. It has no wood, no, no, no plastic on it. Look at the back. This is the spine that holds the frets in place and your fingers pretty much float in air. The, the, there's no fretboard, just air and the strings just float. And at first, it was a little hard for me to think, how, how is this going to work for me? How am I going to be able to play it? But, but it's so easy to play. It turns out that your, your fingers and your hands you just, just instinctively understand how to play this guitar, and you don't find yourself wishing it had a fretboard or wishing it had uh, things that it doesn't. It's completely minimalist, completely cool. Everywhere I play it, people just freak out. Uh, the, the fact that there's no fretboard, there's, it's one of the coolest things about it. You can get your vibrato tone by um, the usual way, bending the string a bit. Or you can actually push down on a string, which is something you really can't do on a regular guitar. Um, it's really liberating. It's got, it's got a very flat fretboard like a classical guitar. And uh, it's real easy to play, especially if you had... Um, if you've been around classical guitars, and, and I'll show you a bunch of different styles to kind of show you that. Um, but the lack of a fretboard, I think, is a plus because it really kind of connects you with the instrument. You don't feel like you're missing out on anything. It's all there for you. thing that's really nice about this guitar is uh, you'd think it would, it would be have intonation issues. It really doesn't. It's got a uh, compensated uh, adjustable bridge that really let you uh, adjust it and get it just the intonation just the way you want it. So you end up with and you can even play up past the frets on the, on the tubes that are the pickups. So it's something that you can't do on any other guitar. Most guitars stop with the 24th fret or the 22nd. You got these extra frets up here. Uh, after a while, you can get up here and play. It's really cool, and it's really cool. I'll show you some more of that. Um, let, let's crank up some distortion, and you can get a feel for that. <laughs> Bending it down. So you can see it's got a lot of really interesting possibilities that you don't have on a really good guitar. 
one. All right, so features. You tune it down here. You tune it down here. You don't tune it at the top. The strings are actually anchored up here at the top. And I'm going to show you how to change a string on it in a little bit, so you can check that out. It's got a, a bass boost and a treble boost. And uh, these are also part of the MIDI controller. If you press down on these buttons, they change the MIDI controller. Um, and then it's got a volume knob here. The volume knob, I usually crank it down to about three quarters because this, this guitar has a lot of gain, a lot more than you'd think. And um, it overdrives my amp in the clean channel. So I turn it down a little bit, which is nice because it gives that extra punch when you really want to go super high gain. It also has a, a mid-range uh, control that's inside the guitar. So you take the back off, unscrew it, and there's a little pot in there you can turn. And once you get that right, it's kind of the set and forget kind of thing. It also lets you adjust the volumes of the strings individu individually. Um, you can turn uh, pots in the back to get your E, E, B, G, D strings, get them just right to mix with the other strings. Although it came from the factory perfectly set up, I haven't touched anything. Um, so clean, you know, where I, I play a lot of uh, jazz gigs, a lot of clean stuff. And, uh, oh, turn the volume off. So clean, you can tell, it just, it just has a real clarity to it that you don't get. So it's got a warmth and a, uh, and a brightness at the same time. Um, one of the interesting parts, or really cool parts about this guitar too, is that it comes with the factory kind of preset action just where I wanted it. It's not too high, it's not too low, no buzzing, no issues. Um, the, the, the pickups are down here, these tubes. And if you look carefully, you can see that the strings are just uh, maybe two and a half millimeters off of, off of the, um, the pickups. So that's one thing you do have to kind of learn how to do, is play with it, play, play with your picks so that you don't go too deep down in. You know, on, on some, some guitars I tend to dig down deep. On this guitar you can still do it, and it doesn't cause any trouble. <laughs> But you just end up hitting the pickup, which is round and doesn't kind of push your pick out or anything. It's just there it is. But if, if to go to play really quick and to get a, a really uh, a light touch on this is probably better. So you're not getting in the way of those pickups. Um, and the pickups are ideally, I think, uh, set up so that it's got the best balance for for all different styles of music. If you get into, like I said, a little more clean, clean playing. Some dis or some course. Or a little more, uh, maybe a martial sound. Dial in as much treble and bass as you want. That's got a, a little less treble, a little more now. Here's something else you can do with this guitar, is take the, uh, detune it a bit. Take the E string, take it down to a D. You can 
like those real crunchy. Uh... As well as some clean, like pretty cool acoustic sounds. stays in tune. That's another really cool thing about this guitar. I mean, once you set it, once the strings stretch out, it stays in tune. The fact that there's not any kind of whammy bar on it is, is an issue for me because I play a lot of whammy, but you can actually bend the whole guitar. The, uh, the neck um, is made of titanium, like I said, which has a great elasticity to it. You can bend the neck a bit and um, like, like any other guitar and not feel like a... <laughs> You can feel it, like you know, it's pretty much indestructible. This thing. The other thing you can do with it, it's not, it's not susceptible to humidity or cold or anything. They say not to go swimming with it, but uh, I wouldn't go swimming with it. But that, that's just me. Uh, but it's really got a lot of really cool features. Um, the frets are solid uh, titanium. They don't wear. I played this. I played it for hours and hours, and I've looked at the frets with a microscope, and there's just nothing happening on these frets. Um, they sell a polish that they, you can polish it up with, um, and, and that keeps it really shiny, although I haven't had to even polish it once yet. It's got two outputs on the back. It's got a um, quarter-inch output for a regular guitar amp, and then it has a MIDI connector. And what I've done with this is when, when you plug in the, uh, the, it's not a MIDI connector, it's, a, it's really a, a synth cable, 13-pin cable. When you plug this in, it lights up the, uh, the fret markers. And they sell it in different color uh, um, models. This one's blue, but I know you can get um, other colors too. The OTB lets you plug your 13-pin cable right into the box, and then your output into the guitar, into your guitar amp, and uh, flip the switch on the box, and that lights up the frets. If you don't use that box, then you have to rely on your Roland synth or whatever synth amp you ha have to light up the frets. Otherwise, the frets won't light up. So it only lights up when you have that, that extra box. And it doesn't change the tone at all of the guitar. Uh, let's look at some, uh, some, country, some country sounds. What is, how about that, right? <laughs> You can even pull off some kind of chicken picking with it. Because you can get your fingers in there just to, to, good enough to get it.
Tar also has a very unique strap lock system. Um, you can it basically hangs on your strap with uh, with these two with these rods here, and you can if you're left-handed, it's easy enough to flip this whole thing around and play it lefty. Um, the uh, there's an Allen wrench that adjusts this and lets you adjust the angle of it that you want it to sit. And then these strap locks that they, it comes with the guitar, the strap locks you just clip them in and uh, you're good to go. And there's no way that this is coming off once it's in. That's it. It's, you know, real simple, easy uh, strap lock system. Um, the strings are uh, uh, connected to the, to the back of the guitar right here. You can see there's six Allen wrench screws. And the way you change a string is you stick the string in the hole and then tighten down that, um, that clamp doesn't take much longer to string up this guitar than any other guitar. It comes with nines. I think you can put tens on it. Beyond that, um, I haven't tried it yet, but it works great with nines with the strings that it came with. Um, and I, and I, think, I think I uh, use standard, standard nines, nine to 46, working great on this guitar. Um, you know, it's simple. You think that uh, this is such a simple thing. Why hasn't it been done before? Well, it's a very complicated guitar to make. Um, and I can see why, because the, f the quality and the, uh, the detail that's into everything here, every fret is perfectly flat. Every, every note is right on, intonation is right on. There's no buzzing of any kind. There's just no issues. This guitar is what we call a no issue guitar. Yeah. And you can play it and play it and play it, and it just stays the same. I've had it in super humid environments and dry environments, cold, hot. It just is what it is. It's just a stable instrument that's going to last forever. It's not going to rust. It's not going to wear out. It's going to be around a lot longer than I am. And it gives you kind of that like country guitar sound, the rock, rock sound, jazz tones. I haven't really found a style that it's not good for yet. It's covered all the bases for me. And the fact that it's so minimal and all that, it just kind of, it fits natural. I mean, it weighs three pounds. So you don't even feel like you have a guitar on. Um, and on stage, it's like, you know, incredible because no one's ever seen anything like this before. And they just jump at it and say, what, what are you playing, dude? Is that a guitar? And then you have to go, yeah, it's a guitar. And here it is. And once they see you playing it, then they know that you know it's uh, it's a real guitar, and there's nothing uh, else to talk about. All right, I'm going to show you now how to change a string on a Gitler guitar. It's uh, very simple. The uh, the first step is to get the new string and uh, get it uncoiled here. And then take the string that you want to change out. I removed the whole tuner like this. And you want to set it so that um, you have as much of the threads showing. And you stick the end of the string into the back of the tuner like that. And it comes out the front. And then you can just pull it all the way through. And then stick it into the tube that that string goes into. Push it in a little tightly, just finger tight. And here's where you want to have as much of the thread showing as you can because when you, when you tighten it, this is going to come back and pull on the string. The next step is to slide down to the other end of the guitar. And over here at the nut, you see that there's a slot where the string sits in right here. And then there's a bar that the string goes around in. 
So I'm just going to flip it over. And uh, there's a little hole in that bar. And you want to put the string through that hole like that. And then into the uh, other tube that has the uh, Allen wrench in it. So there I've got it through right there. So then you just grab this and pull it until it gets tight. Right, I wrap my hand around it a few times to get a good grip on it. You can use pliers, but you can do this just as good. And then you use this Gittler tool. All the guitars come with this specialized tool. It's basically just a pocket Allen wrench with all the tools that you need, nothing special. And um, I mean, there's no weird uh, Allen wrench screws or anything like that. And then you tighten up that string and that clamps the string in place. And you don't have to over tighten it really. You just kind of get it tight, nice and tight, not crazy tight. And then flip the guitar over and we'll come back to this part of the tuning area here. Now you can see the strings in there, it's loose. And now we start cranking this clockwise to tighten it up. It'll come up to pitch pretty fast. There it goes. It's holding good. Now the last step is to come back to the back of the guitar over here and take your um, wire cutters and just cut the back of the string off. And you're done. It's that simple. Um, it only takes a couple minutes to change all the strings, uh, like, like any good guitar should, and that's it. That's it. That's it. So uh, I mentioned before, one of the coolest parts about this guitar is this bridge. The bridge has a compensated saddle so that each string has just the right length to get the right intonation. And that's really important. And there's also a little slot here where this bridge can slide back and forth to get, you know, even you can even t turn it on an angle to get the intonation just right. Came from the factory, perfect, but, you know, if you ever change strings or you want to um, adjust it, you can. Um, and it stays in that little slot. You can see there's a slot there that kind of keeps it in place. The other thing to talk about here is these tuners. The tuners have very fine threads and allow you to very precisely tune the guitars. The original Gitla guitar had, I think, the tuners straight across, but when they redesigned it, they made an improvement to make these different lengths, which makes it a lot easier to, uh, to find the right tuner that you're looking for and grab it uh, real quick and turn it. Um, plus it looks kind of cool. On the back of the guitar, uh, you've got close up of the back, you've got your, your bass boost and your treble boost and they push down to control the MIDI controller and then you have your volume control right here. And that just slides back and forth, a little solid feel to that. Um, this is the uh, quarter inch jack for the uh, amp straight out and this is the jack for the 13 pin MIDI controller. And uh, now to talk about the um, strap, the, the, uh, the nut. The nut has a zero, a zero fret 
with slots in this to guide the strings, and then the strings wrap around this top bar and then wrap around the back and go into the, the part that holds the strings in place. So it's a very elegant, simple, clean design. It works really well. It also has a traditional uh, strap button here and a traditional uh, strap button back here where you can connect an, a regular strap to this if you didn't want to use this uh, back attachment, which is kind of cool too if you wanted to even go even more minimal. So as far as the, the uh, tuning, the nut, and the bridge, everything is the way it should be. Fine, very fine tuning, easy to tune, easy to change strings, uh, perfect. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you was the Gitler Guard. And this is a really cool acrylic um, attachment that uh, works just the back of the, of the neck. This is how it works. Um, you've seen it on the website, but maybe you don't know exactly how it works. Just turn the guitar over. It's got a very interesting little design here, and it's machined just right so that you can stick it right in there, right underneath that retaining bar, and then slide it next to the, across that, and then pop it in place, and that's in place. Once it's in place, it basically acts like the back of a guitar neck so that you basically don't feel the fact that you're playing a guitar without any real neck, just a bar in the middle. Feels like it's got a really nice um, shape, um, very easy to get around, and it's also really cool to get your arms, your, your thumb over the guitar real easy. A lot of times I play with my thumb naturally in the back, but sometimes, you know, when I'm playing more bluesy stuff, I will wrap my thumb around, and uh, with, this, with this on, it's a, it's a lot easier to get those tones. Um, it also um, gives the guitar a little more resonance when you're playing not plugged in, um, but that's kind of a minor benefit of it. Uh, I like playing the guitar both ways, with it and without it. It's kind of cool. It makes it kind of a different guitar when I put this um, Gitler Guard on, and when I take it off, I feel a little more minimalist. But it's acrylic and it's see-through, so that even from on, the, on stage, people don't really know that it's on there. They don't really pick up on it and it just kind of helps you get used to the guitar faster. At first I thought um, I really needed it, and after I played it for a while I realized that I really didn't need it, but sometimes it's really nice to have, so I'm really glad that I, I did get that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was this um, Gitler OTB box, and what this does, it's an add-on box too, what it does is it lets you use your 13-pin uh, synth controller cable as your guitar cable. So, and it has the added benefit of, of uh, lighting up the fret markers. So, if I spin the guitar around here and take my, my synth cable and plug it in, you see it comes into the amp, the fret lights light up, and, uh, and now I have one cable coming out of the guitar, it's powering the fret lights, and it's got my guitar signal going out to my amp. You can play it this guitar without the OTB, but it just makes it easier, and the fret lights are such a cool uh, um, feature that you know you can't you can't go without that sometimes. If you wanted to use it without it, uh, it also powers the um, internal battery that's in the guitar. So if, if you want to just plug in a regular guitar cable, this is where you plug it in, and then it you know you can have both signals that bypasses this. All right, for this part of the video, I wanted to show you guys how this Gitler guitar works as a synth tracker. I've got um, a Roland, an old GR1 guitar synth, and I'm going to just play a few patches and kind of show you guys what it can do. So basically I can play as fast as I want. It grabs on every note and just hangs in there. It's really uh, one of the better uh, MIDI synth trackers.
that on a regular guitar? I don't think so. I think today we've run you through kind of the basics of the Gitler guitar. It's an unbelievable instrument. You've got to check one out uh, and go to their website uh, and check them out and check them out at NAMM and uh, ask your dealer about them. And I'm telling you, uh, I'm not a paid spokesman. I'm just really into this guitar and this is a great guitar. You're going to love it. Rock on.